Good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday morning, so hope you had a great Easter. Uh, there was certainly no shortage of chocolate in our house, that's for sure. So we're back into it, and obviously I'll keep doing these little mini lessons, because obviously this is the thing you're kind of missing out with. Um, I've scanned the pages of the textbook for you, um, and also I've put any relevant slides that you may need to print off, if you're lucky enough to have a printer. So our lesson today is very catchily titled Assimilate or Die, which is nice. So let's move on. So a little reminder, obviously we are working towards, you know, probably doing some kind of mock exam. I'm not sure how that would work, but we will be doing a mock exam. So these are main questions that we're going to be doing. So we've done a lot on the consequence question. We've done a narrative account question about the cattle industry. And we could have a question about explain the importance of. So it could be explain the importance of the Johnson County War, which you did last time. So... You know, what is really good about history is we know what our, what our question stems are going to be and it's going to be this in your exam next year. So what does assimilate mean? So assimilate means basically kind of becoming like something else. So, you know, Plains Indians are obviously very different as we know, hunters and gatherers, nomadic, moving from place to place. So a couple of things they did, for example, send Indian kids to school, which would have been totally bizarre. They wouldn't have understood what sitting down all day would have been totally alien to them. So they wanted Americans, American Indians, to become more American, white American. So if you think about history, you know, we're very good at sort of putting, categorising people into heroes or villains. So we've got Churchill there. Obviously, Churchill was a great British hero, you know, defeated the Nazis, etc., um, but obviously he didn't do wonderful things. He also sort of firebombed the city of Dresden there. So you know, people, human beings, will make mistakes, will do bad things, good things generally. You know, my bromance with Obama there, I love Obama. Um, you know, famously in America, he got Osama bin Laden. But lots of people said, said he could have done more about Syria. So we're going to be looking at this guy here. And his name was uh, Custer, George Custer. And basically, in America, he's known as a hero. Famously, his last stand against the Indians. But actually, as we will see, he was a bit of a bit of an Egypt, really. He wasn't the best military commander we've ever seen. So a bit of background to what was going on here is, obviously, as we know, you know, as there's more contact between whites and Plains Indians... There's more um, tension, so particularly over the railroad. The railroad was expanding, and you can see how the kind of branch lines were developing, not just that east-west line we looked at with the Pacific Railroad Act. And also a major factor was, as we know, the Black Hills was the holiest, if they want to use that word, the most sacred um, location for American Indians for the Lakota Sioux. And gold was discovered in the hills by Castro himself. So this made a big issue, as we will look at. So, this is not Where's Wally, it's Where's Custer? I'll leave that one with you. Who is George Custer on this picture? It's fairly easy to spot. So, I will put this slide on there so you can print this out or you can write it out in your book. It's totally up to you. So, just remind yourself, use, use the first page from the textbook, page 86, that I scanned for you. So just remind yourself of some of the key treaties. So the 1851 Fort Laramie Treaty, in very simple terms, for the first time allowed whites onto Indian land, and in exchange, the US government provided food and money. This was followed by the Indian Appropriation Acts, which encouraged Indians to move on to reservations for financial gain. Also, there was a small, have a look on page 86, it had this in, there was a Fort Wise Treaty, in very simple terms, this moved um, Indians onto much smaller reservations, and as a consequence of the Red Cloud War, in 1868, the Sioux, Great Sioux Reservation was established. So again, if you can just kind of keep uh, completing this. So what happened was, is gold was discovered by George Custer in the Black Hills, and the American government decided to offer the Indians $6 million. Obviously, they refused that, as we know, because it had no money had no value to them in that respect, and they began to attack gold spread gold prospectors as the, as you would if somebody was in your church or your mosque or your synagogue you know when somebody was attacking your most sacred site you would attack them back so the most famous uh, indian chief of all sitting bull refused to go on the reservation so if you can just keep reading through what happened there um 
and just add things in. I've also attached a YouTube clip. It's about a 20-minute clip that will explain about the battle, some of the key things that happened during that battle. Um, so it's called the Battle of Little Bighorn because the Little Bighorn was the river in which the uh, battle was fought. It's a bit like the Battle of the Somme in the First World War. The Somme was the river in France. So it's a pretty brutal battle, so it's worth you just kind of getting down some key bits from that. But obviously what this is really about, the probably most likely question on will be will be explain the importance of this battle, which is kind of the last column. So if you have a look at that, so really the impact of the battle was that pretty much all, in fact not all Indians were forced to go on the reservation as a consequence of this. Um, any treaties that the Indians had signed were pretty much null and void. And it enabled the uh, white Americans to pretty much control militarily the Indians, so horses and weapons were taken off the Indians. So really what happened in at, during this battle was the American Indians totally wiped out and defeated the, the US Army. But um, So here is where the battle took place, it was up in Montana, you know, right on the Canadian border up there, and that's where the Black Hills were. But it's important to understand, even though the Americans lost the battle, so for example, they've got a picture of Pearl Harbor in World War II, you know, the response of the American government was to drop a, a nuclear weapon on Japan. You know, 9-11, New York, Twin Towers, the American response was to basically invade Afghanistan. So, you know, the Americans are not a country that take defeat lightly, and, you know, the, the, most, the most famous example of this was, you know, after the battle, is obviously on the Black Hills, they put the the pictures of the presidents on there, really, as a big two fingers to the American Indians. And they forced the American Indians to assimilate and go to school and basically tore apart their culture totally, absolutely destroyed their culture. Now, you may also also put this task on there as well. I'll put like a storyboard on there. So if there is a narrative account question, obviously just complete our storyboards as we've done before. We'll use page 86 for the top row and page 87 for the bottom row. So hopefully that kind of gives you a bit more of a flavor. Any queries, questions, whatever, if you can email me, but remember to email me from your school account. Have a good day. See you later. Bye.